What is a dark lantern anyway? Hi, I'm Mark Williams. I'm publishing lost and rediscovered detective thrillers from the 1800s in brilliant new editions. And mentioned in a lot of these books is a device called a dark lantern. Ordinary things can be hard to research because they were originally so common as to be taken for granted. The standard flashlight of the late 1800s is a good example. Many types of lanterns were in use during that time, but one was essentially standard for the police, military, and watchmen. These were variously called dark lanterns, police lanterns, or bullseye lanterns because of the big bullseye lens on the front. The example in this picture is a Dietz brand police flashlight, and this one serves as the model for the Dark Lantern Tales logo. Most lanterns shed light from the time they're lit until they're extinguished, but dark lanterns can show or hide the light from their wicks as the operator chooses. Beginning hundreds of years ago, some lanterns were made with doors and other devices to allow or block the light that they could shed. By the 1850s, the basic design appeared that became standard for nearly a century. Typical dark lanterns were about the size and shape of a small modern thermos bottle and had a fount for oil in the bottom. A cap with a wick or wicks was mounted directly to the top of this reservoir and in most models the cap also served as a port to fill it. In the cylindrical body of the lantern, a shutter could be rotated to block the light from coming through a large bullseye lens on the front. At the top of the lantern was a vent that allowed exhaust from the flame to exit but still retain the light. At the back of the lantern were wire handles to protect the user from the hot sides and usually a clip to hang the lantern on the user's belt. These lanterns were made of sheet steel or sheet iron in some cases and plated with tin. The least expensive and most common finish was japanning which was a lacquer made from a concoction of tar and baked to a shiny brown or black finish. More expensive lanterns were in polished tin or brass. This lantern is made fully of brass and uh, dates to about 1900. The earliest images of a dark lantern that I've been able to locate date from the American Civil War. A fairly standard lantern was located in the Confederate submarine Hunley, and that lantern has now been conserved from the lump of rust and other concretion in which it was found. The Hunley sank in 1864 and was finally recovered 136 years later. A link to the Hundley artifact site is at the end of the article on my Dark Lantern Tales website. You can go to a direct link there. Another Civil War image of Dark Lanterns also involves the Confederate forces. This illustration portrays troops in the dark with two lanterns and is on the front page of an 1862 Harper's Weekly. The original is a wood engraving made after a Winslow Homer drawing. Dark lanterns were used by police forces in both America and in England, and the standard design may have come originally from England. British lanterns are often of heavier construction, and some have three of the fluted vents on top, whereas the American ones typically have two, or occasionally one. The simplest design was to make the shutter part of the top, so an operator could rotate the top to open or close the light. When open, the shutter serves as a reflector behind the wick, Again, the Adams and Westlake lantern illustrates this design. Another common design controls the shutter with a knob at the bottom right of the lantern. Pushing the knob around to the front of the lantern closes off the light, and of course pulling it back opens it. In 1886 a design was patented for operating the shutter with the thumb of the hand that held the lantern. The implications for one-handed operation meant that the other hand could open doors or hold a weapon. Dietz, an American maker of high-quality lanterns, began selling this design in 1888 and marked them Police Flashlight. A smaller lantern design in my collection has a single wick and is more truly a pocket-sized dark lantern that would fit the description in these detective stories. This is a copy of Beadle's New York Dime Library from 1890 and shows a dark lantern in use. This story is available from Dark Lantern Tales in a brilliant new edition. Few of the old lanterns that can be found today have the original finish. These lanterns were tools, and when they rusted, somebody painted them. Most of the lanterns pictured here that are in my collection are preserved with their finish as found, so some of them have deteriorating paint over the deteriorating metal finish or lacquer. Many thanks to the friends of the Hundley for allowing me to use the image of their historic lantern in this article.